my god andy i love you so much hi i love you too uh, this was a huge surprise we were talking about you surprise were you oh my god yeah. i hope only good things jesus <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about a Christmas carol and how special that was. Oh my God. Can you, we were babies. Like I see those photos and I'm like, that happened really. And so much. Yes. I know. I know that was, it, it was, it was, I, I don't think we realized how special it was at the time. Yeah, you know? it was amazing. Corey was amazing. Uh, Josh. Corey was- told you like it was. If he didn't like how the scene was, he'd be like, oh, that was horrible. I, you know, (laughs) funny story about Corey. I went to, you know, I used to get coaching from him, like, quietly on the side. And I used to go over to his house on the hill. And he used to grab me by the arm and say, did you believe that? Because I didn't. And (laughs) I was like, oh, God. So he was a lot more sassier one-on-one than I think. Oh, no. He told me, he was like, honestly, that scene scene scared the shit out of me. I was like, okay. All right. And then we'd work on it. And then he'd be, and then I asked him, I was like, you're getting better. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Cool. He didn't it's so know. amazing that, you know, I was hearing, you know, I, whenever I think of Corey, I think of, you know, grandfather and family and, and my, my teacher and, but, but I, I forget, I don't forget, but it, it, you know, I'm thinking now, this was the man who was in Rebel Without a Cause. He, he directed and cast Star Trek the next generation. I know, exactly. Uh, yeah. When I, I know, I know. Was, and yeah. then. And then he just he decides to to work with us, and that I think that says so much about Corey as a person, mm. and because he he was struggling at that time, absolutely, and he still made it there, and you know, and showed shared his wisdom, and the fact that I was there at his funeral at Howard Fine was also amazing too, because I think Levar Burton spoke spoke, and I was like had to play it cool but like inside i was screaming oh my god what a speech she gave yeah. yeah and then shane little tiny shane ended up doing a monologue and he's old now which makes me feel very old <laughs> he's yeah. old you know, what does that make me very... <laughs> <laughs> yeah I exactly feel very like we look young which is great for work but alice and it's i the... are like holy crap it's this the is... cp tightness it keeps yeah. him young exactly and the... And the good medical cannabis, of course. Yeah, Yeah. and and the gayness. So between gay and CP, we'll have these faces. Thank you. Well, you you know, you brought up Howard Fine, but you you studied with Laura Gardner, correct? I did. I did. Uh, Also, another person that I grew up with. Again, family through media access. And hey, hey, she was like one of my first professional teachers. That's my service dog, Marla, in the background. Oh, Marla. Uh, She's on the couch. That's her favorite. She watches movies with me, by the way. She is my child. Oh, it's yeah. it's pet time here on Meet the Biz. Yay, Marla! We're talking about you. Yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Marla, you're distracting. Uh, Laura, uh, Laura Gardner and how it's yeah, and 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 Laura Gardner, you know, is so is very intense, you know, and 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 very much about finding your surroundings and finding your character and and uh you know just big time stage lady big time stage presence you know and that's what i always respected her for yeah i like people that i'll just give it to you straight and be like that she's very give it to you straight like you know um but i've been studying with uh my coaches for since I only studied with Laura for a short time. And that, again, that was mainly because it was unaccessible. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and at the time, I, I had a scholarship to go to Howard Fine because Howard Fine is the cheapest. Yeah. <clears throat> but again, I think you need to find people that are not only in, a, in an accessible place, but are also willing to work with you on, on pricing and and all that stuff because and that it, was, it was accessible at once and then it became it was upstairs yeah so the coaches that i have now they originally had like a flight of stairs and a, and I, even though i really liked them and they're a lot more relaxed 
um, I couldn't I couldn't do the stairs. And then they they ended up moving to Burbank to this really accessible location. And then and she ended up my coach that I have now is actually my scene partner. And uh, so we we've, we've been friends for years. So we have already this bond and she just knows how to pull the best work out of me. And uh, she would drive me to class herself, like uh, like two times, you know, a month. And then now with COVID, I get to do it over Zoom, which is even better. And I only have to pay for the single class, not anything ahead of time or anything like that. It's just pay what I can. This is a question for both of you, since you're both here. Uh, and we could start with Andy. Um, what is something in your life that you are most proud of? Huh. There's so much. But um, Andy being at the White House? Yeah. Well, that was a big thing. Um, but yeah, no, I think, you know, I, I love performing. I love acting. I love being just in the in the work right but I also know and Alice is a hustler too so she gets it if you have a disability we can't just rely on getting performances or getting work we either have to create our own content or we have to have a full-time job and so through this journey of acting for me I've always for me, I've had to be employed because the idea of being poor for me was not a thing. I wasn't going to do that to myself. So I've had a job for like the last 10 years and doing this because it's, you know, until I get a series regular or until I get on a series or have my own show, that's how it has to be, you know, and, and I'm fine with that. But it's a um, yeah, it's been quite a journey. And I hope that Alice and I get to do uh, projects together in the future because I it's going to happen. Extra, gonna extra happen. special is going to hit the screen and people are yeah. going to poop themselves. Yeah, they're going to have an aneurysm when they see us together. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Now, yeah. we are. We already have something in the works, kitties. So, do Stay you? Tuned. Yes. yes. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Well, I was telling Alice that I, I, you know, I was, I, I in fact, I saw you, your posts. I think yesterday or today about in the pictures of my gay and lesbian husband and I yeah said, I oh yes the two of them you know because I remember back in the day you guys were in the show together you guys I would see you at class and this and that and I said I think I'm going to surprise her with Andy. oh my heart left <laughs> no definitely no that's yeah our our friendship goes back a long way and mm. you know he Andy knew me when I was very straight looking and yeah and uh, you know not fully come out of the closet yet and now look at my transformation so yeah she is full on lesbian transformed married full on you know it's it's so metal to the metal yes yeah it's it's beautiful to see yeah because you were always like that I knew you right out the gate but you know for me. I think with acting too, that was another thing, you know, I was just, I always wanted to be the girl from Empire Records, you know, that type of tatted out girl, you know, and multicolored hair and all that, and the whole nine, but then acting kind of, you know, I was real scared about that. I would always not get tattoos. The tattoos I had were on my back and, you know, and just, you keep the, just be you, the world will adjust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might take the world a while to catch up, but they'll they'll get there eventually. Yeah, so just be the kind of artist that you wish to be, and sure enough, you know it'll it'll come up where they go. I got stuff for tattoos now, so I never thought I'd see that. So yeah, um, I have two questions. First of all, I want to go back to that question for you, Alice, about what is something in your life that you're most proud of. Oh my God. Uh, that's, I'm proud of a lot of stuff. I'm proud of me just in general. Like I didn't, I wasn't born with this kind of self-acceptance. Absolutely not. 
I was pretty miserable. And mainly that was because I didn't overcome a disability. You know, that's, that's not the point. What I overcame was severe ableism, uh, which I encountered a lot in school. School sucked. I'm going to be quite frank with you. Um, I didn't fit into their learning box. So it was just a struggle the whole way. Uh, except in elementary school, that was fine. But middle school and high school, it was just, just miserable. And I didn't have any self-acceptance about being gay or disabled. But then I started working with young kids that with disabilities. And I, you know, just by being yourself, these kids were looking up to me, you know? And so I realized there's great power in accepting who you are and being who you are. And um, I, I hope that that reflects in the work that I do. And I, I believe it does. Um, you know, on 911, I'm playing the hero in that scene. You know, I have the knowledge. Uh, drug history is another one where, you know, it's talking about the whole 504 sit-in with Judy Human. You know, I had, I'm, I'm, I watch movies, right? I watch tapes. So I don't really watch a lot of TV a lot of the time to see what's on. So I had not only had I not seen drunk history when I did that show, I didn't know who Judy Human was, which blows my mind at the time. So I was a part of this big historical disability moment. And I, you know, again, I think that you, you realize later, oh yeah, that was really special, yeah. you know? And I, I just, I, and then with special, I mean, that was another moment that, I mean, we were a part of a gay disabled prom and all of us had our disabilities in some way, shape or form. And it was like the who's who of young disability Hollywood was there besides Andy and Toby. Yeah. They were the only two missing and we missed them greatly. We were too but... pretty for the show. That's <laughs> I know. They, I think that's what it was. Yeah. And they were like, no, we can only have one hot gay guy. Right. They were like, there's too much there. We got to even well, out. You guys have aged like a fine wine. You're not lying. So, yeah. And like, don't get me started on Toby. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I would like to say one other thing that I'm very proud of Alice for is you know, we all know the people in the industry, once they get to a certain point in their career, they get very like beyond themselves and beyond reality. And, you know, the people that we have in our orbit are very down to earth people, but Alice has remained Alice throughout her journey of her career, which is very rare to see. And I think that, you know, you should give yourself credit for that, Alice, because you, you've always just been Alice and that's beautiful. And you've always just been Andy. And I think that's, there's a, there's more to it than just acting for us. I think, you know, we're, we're not here to play the game. We're here to change it. And there's a lot of there's a lot of responsibility and a holy fuck that comes with that but also like I'm really humble that it, it turned out to be me I thought it was going to be somebody else and then it no it was me and so I'm like wow you know I'm proud of myself that I got to this moment and you know that's ultimately what I'm proud of and There's I'm proud for you fun. because I think that you know you've you've had a tough life being gay and disabled and you've never not been Andy. And I just, you know, and that's, you know, even when the industry is saying, I think you're a bit too gay and it's like, but it's who I am. I can't, yes. I'm not anybody else. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's certain levels of gayness that we can play, right? Or there's Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. And we could dial it down or dial it up, but I think the authenticity comes through in our performance regardless of whether or not and I think now the industry is looking at it and saying I'll like not running scared but running towards it and saying it's it's what we well, need. and then Ryan of course I mean you can't get any more authentic than Ryan sure right now I mean the stuff that he's coming you know saying and, and it's hard it's not easy stuff it's not easy stuff to watch by any means but it's the truth mm-hmm and I think that's what I 
just want to portray as much as possible, whether it's being a significantly disabled person or a, a super gay person or just, you know, whatever, uh, okay. or an activist, or if I'm smoking a joint, that's a part of me too. I remember that was another thing that I had to come to terms with because without medical cannabis, I wouldn't be able to do any of the stuff that I do today. I consider it my body's upkeep. And I remember when I was starting Rolling Stone and getting that whole universe going, I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. You know, it might just be one more nail in the coffin that for me, that would, that wouldn't work. And that's, you know, but that's me. It's how I'm able to be here. You know, I have to say, I'm, I'm just taking this whole thing in this conversation and just cheering up because it it makes me really realize that I'm so lucky to have this extended family and the life that I have you know I mean you you sort of plan oh I'm going to be an actor and I'm going to be in this and this and that you know or whatever and if you allow the journey to unfold and don't fight it and you come across these amazing people that make your life so bright and so wonderful. So I'm just listening to the two of you. I mean, I haven't been with the two of you together like this in, in a long time. I mean, not on Zoom, of course, but yeah. <laughs> but I mean, in person. And it may, brings back all these memories and just what I've been doing with my life over the last 25, 30 years. And I feel so, I don't know, the word that comes to my mind is blessed. But blessed. What for? Well, no, it's be, it, it's it, yeah, for clamped, but uh, it's it's blessed. It is beyond blessed uh, to have to to be with such. I mean, again, family. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, and in, in the gay community, that was one of the first terms I learned was family. It, you know, that was kind of like the the term instead of, or are you gay or are you gay? Or so I would always say, are you family? Mm. And yes. So I think that, uh, yeah, it's, it, it definitely makes the trip easier and what you, the trials and tribulations easier. And that was one of the things that I went into when I first moved down here was, you know, pursue your dreams, even if it doesn't go in the direction that you thought it would, it's going to lead somewhere beautiful. And it's going to lead you to the to your right people when you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I've learned very quickly that if something isn't supposed to be yours, just wait and the universe will give you what is meant to be yours. What yeah, the universe time. likes to take her sweet ass time. It's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> to, let's just put that out there. She's a slow girl. She likes. She's a slow like, girl. She likes yeah. to brew and she likes to think about it, and then she likes to surprise you when you're least expecting it. It's like, girl. Yeah. Jeez. Mother yeah. Earth, Mother Universe. Okay. She's like, yeah. oh yeah, you. Okay, here's your turn now. Just, just by the way. Yeah. Yeah, and also another thing I want to say is yeah. I found spirituality as well. I, I consider myself a Buddhist, and that was another step into just finally going okay i'm worthy what do i want for myself how do i get it basically what i found is is there's no two job two jobs that are too small you know what i mean uh i've done a, a ton of background work and i remember when i first started doing a lot of background work people were like are you sure you want to do that you don't want to get pigeonholed into that and i'm like what are you talking about like i get to learn in major film studios, how, how it works, what they're looking for, you know, it's like going to film school, you know, but not having to pay this giant fee, you know, <laughs> and sure enough, you get, you get more calls and it just snowballs. So just, just put yourself out there and get good representation, know good people and just keep chipping away at it. So. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, oh, one last question. What's your favorite tattoo? My favorite tattoo? Oh my that God. Have. Well, I, know, I have a I couple of you. tattoos with yeah. my wife. So those are pretty special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a, 
<laughs> our awareness ribbons. So I have, it's orange and green. So we have the CP ribbons and the multiple sclerosis ribbon together in the shape of a heart. So that's pretty gay and wonderful. Yeah. Um, but I probably say my VHS tape. That's probably my, one of my favorites. I like and I wonder why. Candy tape actually. Or uh, your, your, your search candy. Is it oh, oh, you mean the Smarties? Yes, yeah, it's, it's Smarties, yes. Oh my God, do you remember that story? You were It was on my birthday and I was there for like six hours and I left you with my mom. You're like, what is going on? I thought she died. I thought she died. I was like, legitly, she had a spasm. They stabbed her with a needle. It's fine. But she, but it was, it's a big tattoo, David, and it's beautiful. But I really, I was worried that she, yeah. She's good. Yeah. She's alive. Yeah, and I have a lot of family tattoos and a lot of tattoos for people that have passed on and my dogs. And yeah, I'm just gonna be one giant memorial by the time I get to whatever age. The illustrated so. woman. Yeah, that is exactly Ooh. what I wanted. So I'm not too fond of being of my white heritage most of the time, mm. to be honest. We've done a lot of really messed up shiz, but it's why we're here to change the game. Yeah. Hey, will you give a hug to your wife for me? I will. And I'll give a hug to both of you. Oh. You both look so handsome, making Let's a straight girl hug. question herself. I know, right? Yay. Always. Thank you guys for having me on here. Thank you, Andy, for, for yeah, coming thanks on. Thanks for ruining the interview, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! That's the best thing. <laughs> oh, All right. thank you, Alice. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I hope it wasn't too bad. Oh my God. I got like so emotional. It was like wonderful. Oh, here's a tissue. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, oh, I got it. Thank you. Oh. Welcome to Rolling Stone, your source for all things disability friendly within the medical cannabis community. Today, we're interviewing your host, me, myself, and I. And you are? I am Alice Keenan Deal. I am 31 years old. I live in Southern California with my beautiful wife, Amanda. That's me. And my awesome service dog, Marla Pooch. Oh, excuse you.
was nice. Right. Good, good. Yeah, that was that was easy. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to say about anything? No, I think that was that was pretty nice. Surprise me with Andy. Oh, good. Ah, uh, that's the best. Well, you've you've known me. You've known me since I was a teenager. So right. Since I was a baby. Well, may we keep on working together more and more. Yes, please. That would be amazing. I, I know that you were doing stuff with Jerry and, and John's brother and all that stuff. It'd be wonderful to get something like that going again. Right? <laughs>